Hello, my dear friends. As you all know that we are discussing all the past year MCQs in our each and every video. So today also I have got few more important questions, answers and the explanation of the answers itself. So before we start, be ready and keep pen and paper ready in order to write your own scores. And I request you all to be very much attentive and be sincere to yourselves so that what marks you get, you can write in our comment box. And uh, before we start our video, let me tell you that you all can join our WhatsApp group as well in order to get more MCQs and more discussion on question answers. So let's begin with today's MCQs. Let's begin with question number one. In which novel of Fielding, the hero and the heroine are based on Fielding and his first wife? Your options are Tom Jones, option B, Joseph Andrews, option C, Amelia, option D, Jonathan Wild the Great. And your answer is option C, Amelia. Let's see the highlighters. Amelia Amelia is a sentimental novel written by Henry Fielding, published in December 1751. It was the fourth and final novel written by Fielding. It was printed in only one edition while the author was alive, although 5,000 copies were published of the first edition. Amelia follows the life of Amelia and Captain William Booth after they are married. It contains so many allusion, allusions to classical literature and focuses on the theme of marriage, feminine intelligence, but Fielding's stance on gender issues cannot be determined because of the lack of authorial commentary discussion discussing the matter. Fielding began writing Amelia in the autumn of 1749. He turned his own life for inspiration and the main character Amelia was possibly modelled on Henry's first wife Charlotte who died on November 1744. Likewise the hero Captain Booth was partly modelled after Henry Fielding himself. It was advised sorry, it was advertised on 2nd December 1751 by the, by the publisher Andrew Miller in the general advertiser. The work had two German translations published in 1754, a Dutch translation in 1756 and a French edition in 1762. Question number two, Elegy, written in country churchyard, mourns the death of option A, James Thompson, option B, soldiers, option C, the common man, option D, copper. Your answer is option C, the common man. Here, Elegy, written in country churchyard, is a poem by Thomas Gray. It completed. It was completed in 1715, first published in 1751. The poem's origin are unknown, but it was partly inspired by Gray's thoughts following the death of the poet Richard West in 1742. Originally titled Stanjas wrote in a country churchyard, the poem was completed when Gray was living near St. Giles Parish Church at Stroke Porges. It was, sent, it was sent to his friend Horace Walpole, who, pub, who popularized the poem among London literary circles. An elegy is a mournful, melancholy or plaintive poem, especially a lament for the dead. 
Unlike many elegies, however, Thomas Gray's elegy in a court in a country courtyard churchyard mourns the death of common men rather than great of famous people. In this morning, Gray reflects upon the classical idea of common morality, human morality, as he praises the simple lives of common folk who are buried in the churchyard. Let's move to the next question, question number three. Which work of Browning deals with the murder of a young wife, Pompilia? Your options are option A, Fra Lippo Lippi, option B, Andrea del Sato, option C, Rabbi Ben Ezra, or option D, The Ring and the Book. And your answer is option D, The Ring and the Book. Let's go through the highlighters. The Ring and the Book is a long dramatic narrative poem and more specifically a verse novel of 21,000 lines written by Robin Browning, Robert Browning. It was published in four volumes from 1868 to 1869 by Smith, Elder and Company. It is a narrative poem and it has mystery. The book tells the story of a murder trial in Rome in 1698 whereby an impoverished nobleman, Count Guido Francescini, is found guilty of the murders of his young wife Pompilia or Comparini. Question number six. In Jane Austen's novel Emma, Emma falls in love with Knightley, John Fairfax, option C, Colonel Fitzwilliams, option D, Thomas Bertram. And here the answer is Knightley. Let's see why this option is the correct answer. It is your correct answer because Emma Fourth novel by Jane Austen, published in three volumes in 1815. It was set in Highbury, England, in the early 19th century. The novel centers on Emma Woodhouse and a precious young woman whose misplaced confidence in her mistaking, sorry, matchmaking abilities occasions several romantic misadventures. It was published on 23rd December 1815, Emma in love with and wants to marry Mr. Knightley. Next question is, Holy Sonnet is also called Option A, Divine Meditations, Option B, Divinity of Sonnet and Songs, Option C, Divine Collection, Option D, Divinity of done. Here option A, divine meditation is the correct answer. Holy sonnets are called divine meditations. Op uh, the first point is holy sonnets 1633. It also divine, it is also called divine meditation or divine sonnets. It is a series of 19 poems by John by Dunn, which was published posthumously. It is written in Petarchan style, consists of two quatrains, which means four line stanza and a sestate six line stanza of the sonnet. Sonnet 16th sorry sonnet 18 since she whom i love hath paid her last debt is thought to have been written in 1617 following the death of his wife and more in these sonnets dunn addresses religious theme of immorality divine judgment divine love and humble penance while reflecting deeply personal anxieties 
the sonnets were written on Dunn's conversation conversion to Anglicanism in 1615. Holy sonnets appeared in three sequence. Next question number six. Which among the following is not written by John Wilmot? Here options are a satire against religion and mankind. Option B history of insipids. Option C Valentinian. Option D reasons for restoring some prayers. And your option D reasons for restoring some prayers is the correct answer. John Wilkins' work, A Satire Against Reason and Mankind. Rochester's best known for this work and it remains among his best known work today. He has written history of insipids as well. It is a devastating attack on the government of Charles II and his maimed debauchery has been described as a masterpiece of heroic irony. He wrote an adaptation of Fledger's Valentinian, a scene from Sir Robert Howard's The Conquest of China, a prologue to Elkanah Settles, the Empress of Morocco, and epilogues to Sir Francis Fane's Love in the Dark, Charles Devlin's Circle, a tragedy in the year 1677. Jamery Collier has written reasons for restoring some prayers of prayers or reasons for restoring some prayers and directions as they stand in the communication as they stand in communion service of the first English reformed liturgy. Question number seven. Which of the following statement is not correct about Biographia Literaria? Option A. Willing and suspension of disbelief is concept originated from his book, from this book. Option B. It published in two volumes and it contains 23 chapters. It contains Coleridge celebrated and reversed distinction between imagination and fancy. Option D. The work contains the concept of negative capability. And your answer, option D, is the correct one. Let's look at the highlighters. Biographia Literaria, which was written in 1817. Biographia Literaria, or in full, Biographia Literaria, or Biographical Sketches of My Literary Life and Opinions, is an autobiography in discourse by Coleridge, published in 1817 in two volumes. It contains 23 chapters. In the first part of the work, Coleridge is mainly concerned with showing the evolution of his philosophic creed. The author believes in the self-sufficient power of absolute genius and distinguished between genius and talent as between an egg and egg shell. The discussion involves his definition of imagination or eseplastic, eseplastic power, the faculty by which the soul perceives the spiritual unity of universe. Eseplastic means to shape the secondary imagination ideas. It contains Coleridge's celebrated and worst distinction between imagination and fancy. Chapter 14 is the origin of famous critical concept, willing and suspension of disbelief. Let's move to the question number 8. The primary difference between imagination and fancy is Option A. Imagination is universal. Fancy is creative. Option B. 
secondary imagination is more active and conscious and fancy is universal. Option C, fancy is more active and conscious and imagination is universal. Option D, secondary imagination is more active and conscious whereas fancy is no creative power. And here option D is your correct answer. Let's see the highlighters. Imagination. According to Coleridge, imagination has two forms, primary and secondary. Primary imagination is merely the power of receiving impression of the external world through the senses, the power of perceiving the object of sense. The primary imagination is universal. It is possessed by all. Whereas fancy. Fancy is not a creative power at all. It only combines what is perceived into beautiful shapes. But like the imagination, it does not fuse and unify. Fancy, dependent on and inferior to imagination, is merely associative. Let's move to the next question. Question number 9. The tradition and individual talent and essay formulates Eliot, Eliot's Option A. Author and literary tradition. Option B. Poet and practicality. Option C. Poet and his problem. Option D. Poet and literary tradition. And here option D. Poet and literary tradition is the correct answer let's see the highlighters tradition and individual tradition and individual talent which was published in the year 1919 it is an essay by poet and literary critic T S Eliot it was first published in the egoist and later in Eliot's first book of criticism the sacred wood. The book marked the beginning of new criticism. Tradition and individual talent formulates Eliot's poet and literary tradition. Question number 10. The well-known persona of literature T.S. Eliot was awarded Nobel Prize for his Option A. Tradition and individual talent. Option B. Hamlet and his problem. Option C, Outstanding Pioneer Contribution to Present-Day Poetry. Option D, Wasteland. Here, Option C is very correct option. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1948 for his Outstanding Pioneer Contribution to Present-Day Poetry. Please keep in mind Friends, you might forget it later on. So keep it in your mind for your examination. Next question number 11. Which of the following is not a part of essay tradition and individual talent? Option A. The concept of tradition. Option B. Conclusion. Option C. The theory of impersonal poetry. Option D. Talents of author. Here, option D, talents of author, is the correct option. Let's focus on the highlighters. Tradition and individual talent formulates Eliot's poet and literary tradition. The essay is divided into three parts. Part 1 is the concept of tradition. Part 2 is the theory of impersonal poetry. Option, sorry, part 3 is conclusion. Let's move ahead. Question number 12. The concept of objective correlative T.S. Eliot propounded in his work in Option A. Westland Option B. Tradition and individual talent Option C. The sacred wood and Option D. Hamlet and his problem and Option D. Hamlet and his problem is the correct option. Let's move ahead and see the highlighters. Hamlet and his problems. An essay by T.S. Eliot written in 1990 
that offers a critical reading of Shakespeare. It first appeared in T. S. Eliot's The Sacred of Wood, Essay and Poetry and Criticism in 1920 by Favor and Favor and in 1932 in Selected Essays. He claims that Hamlet is most certainly an artistic failure and also propounded the concept of objective correlative. He propounded dissociation of sensibility in his another important work, The Metaphysical Poets. Let's move ahead to question number 13. The study of poetry is a famous critical essay of option A, Alexander Pope, option B, Sidney, option C, Arnold, and option D, Samuel Jensen, Johnson. Here, option A is not correct, option B, Philip Sidney is also a wrong answer, but Matthew Arnold is correct one. So here option C is the correct answer. Let's see the details about the answer. His most famous critical essay is the study of poetry. Here his views were Arnold called Shelley a beautiful and additional information. His views Arnold calls Shelley a beautiful and ineffectual angle beating in the void his luminous wings in vain. About Coleridge, a poet and philosopher wrecked in the midst of opium. In function of criticism, Arnold says that for good literature to flourish, two powers are necessary, the creative and the critical. His critical work works about education and humanistic matter are culture and anarchy, which was published in the year 1869 and literature and dogma that was published in the year 1873. According to Arnold, the true subject to poetry is an excellent action appealing to the great primary human affections and he believed that a dull subject can be made interesting by the poet's treatment of the subject. Question number 14. Consider the following statement above about Plato. Option, sorry, statement 1. He was an Athenian philosopher during the classical period in ancient Roman Empire. Statement 2. He was distinguished between Mimesis and Degenesis. Option statement 3. Thomas More's Utopia was highly influenced by Plato's theory of mimesis. Which of the following, which of the given statements are correct? Option A, 1 and 2. Option B, 2 and 3. Option C, 1 only. Option D, 1, 2 and 3. Here, answer is statement 1, statement 1 and statement 2. Both are correct which is in the option A. Okay, let's move ahead. Let's see the highlighters. He was an, he was an Athenian philosopher during the classical period in ancient Greece. He was the founder of the Platonist school of thought and the academy, the first institution of higher learning in the Western world. His original name was Aristotle, means broad-shouldered. He was the first critic of poetry who wrote dramatic dialogues rather than didactic volumes. He distinguished between mimesis and degenesis, in which mimesis is the speech of a character directly reproduced, where degenesis is a narration of doing and saying his famous work His famous work is The Republic, which 
had strong influence on Thomas More's Utopia. Question number 15. Which of the following statement is not correct about Plato's theory of mimesis? Statement A. Sorry, option A. He censored poetry because it distorts reality. Option B. He considered philosophy is better than poetry because philosophers deals with idea truth, whereas poet deals with illusion. Option C. He considered poetry without rules is of no use. Option C. According to Plato, poets are breeders of falsehood and poetry is mother of lies. Option C is the correct answer. That is, he considered poetry without rules is of no use. Let's focus on the highlighters. According to Plato's theory of mimesis or imitation, the, art, the arts deal with illusion, illusion and they are imitation of an imitation. Hence, poetry is twice removed from reality. Thus, he censored poetry because it distorts reality. According to him, philosophy is better than poetry because a philosopher deals with re ideal truth whereas poet deals with that what appears to him or illusion he disproves he disapproves of poetry because it is immortal and based on falsehood according to plato truth of philosophy was more important than the pleasure of poetry He objected poetry on three grounds, education, philosophical and moral viewpoint. In his theory, he gave an example of a carpenter and chair. Illustration. The idea of chair first came in the mind of carpenter as he gave physical shape to idea out of wood and created a chair. The painter imitated the chair of carpenter in his picture of chair. Thus, painter's chair is twice removed from reality. Hence, he believed that art is twice removed from reality. According to Plato, poets are breeders of falsehood and poetry is mother of lies. Question number 16. Consider the following statements about the Republic choose the incorrect statement statement one is it contains the dialogue of Socrates option B it contains ten books where in the first book Socrates asks for definition of justice option C the participants also discuss the theory of forms in Republic Republic option D Plato defines democracy as a government of people who love, rule, and honor. And here your answer is option D. Let's see the highlighters. The Republic is the Socratic dialogue where, which was written by Plato around 380 BC and it's written in 10 books concerns with the definition of justice, the order and character of the just city, state, and just man. For this reason, ancient readers used the name on justice as an alternative title. It's proved to be more influential works of philosophy and political theory. The participants also discussed the theory of forms, the immortality of the soul, and the roles of the philosopher and the poetry in society. Socrates defines democracy as a government of people who love, rule, and honor. I hope it's clear. Friends, let's move ahead. Question number 17. The City of Gold is a work written by 
Plotinus, Hippo, Eurifides, or Longinus. Here, your option B is correct, that is Hippo. Let's see the highlighters. Hippo is often called as Augustine of Hippo, famous for the city of gold. His other works, Reading the Confession, is an autobiographical work. The Mysterious Women from Northern Africa, Ontology and Eudaimonism, Philosophical and Anthropology, Psychology and Epistemology. Question number 18. Who stated about whom? Here is God's plenty and a rough diamond and must first be polished ere he shines. Option A. Dryden, from Ch uh, Dryden about Chaucer. Option B. Samuel Johnson about Chaucer. Option C. Milton about Chaucer. Option D. Dryden about Shakespeare. Your option A. That is, Dryden about Chaucer is correct option. Let's go towards the highlighters of this answer. Dryden states, Dryden stated about him, Here is God's plenty and a rough diamond and must first be polished ere he shines. Dryden called Chaucer the father of English poetry. Arnold says about him, Chaucer lacks not only the accent of Dante, but also the high seriousness. W. J. Long called the prologue to the Canterbury Tales as the prologue to modern fiction because of its realism. S. D. Neal stated, had Chaucer written in prose, it is possible his Troilus and Cressida and not Richardson's Pamela would be celebrated as first English novel. Next, in Fairy Queen, Edmund Spencer called Chaucer well of English undefiled. Next point, Neville Coghill interpreted Canterbury Tales in 20th century English. Question number 19. Who among the following introduced Felicity in English? Dryden, Chaucer, Milton or Samuel Johnson? Option B, that is Chaucer, is the correct answer. Chaucer introduced Felicity in English. Longest tale of Canterbury Tales is Ninth's Tale. In the Legends of Good Women, the nine legends are Leoptra, Thebes, Dido, Hippispile, Hipsipile, sorry, Media, Lucris, Ariadne, Philomela, Phyllis, and Hypermenstra. Dryden rewrote Canterbury Tales in modern English. Boccaccio exercised a deep influence on Chaucer. On diplomatic mission, he was sent to Italy where he met Petarch and Boccaccio, he makes a clear reference on Petarch in his Clerk's Tale. Next point, he is called father of English poetry and grandfather of English novel. He is called Morning Star of Song and Morning Star of Renaissance. Arnold says about him, Chaucer lacks not only the accent of Dante but also the high also the high seriousness. He is the first one to use Ottawa Rima in the book of the Duchess. Ottawa Rima is the eight syllable line in couplet rhyming. He uh, first sorry, he first used heroic couplet in the legends of good women. Heroic couplet is 10 syllable line rhymic in couplet, that is, decasyllabic couplet. He first used rhyme royal in Troilus and Cressida. Rhyme royal 
is 10 syllable line arranged in seven line stanza a b a b b c c chaucer's troilus and cressida is called novel in verse in the house of fame chaucer resembles closer to dante's divine comedy the general prologue of the canterbury tales contains 858 lines the general plan sorry the general plan of canterbury tales is taken from boccaccio's decameron in canterbury the pilgrims could be seen going to thomas a becket in the in the month of april he gave pen picture of 21 pilgrims in this work Ockleave wrote a famous poem, The Regiment of Princes on the Death of Chaucer. Chaucer and Langland died in the same year, that is 1400. Chaucer had been criticized for presenting about courts and cultivated classes and neglected, neglected the sufferings of the poor. Although the Canterbury Tales 120 stories were planned, but only 24 were completed. Question number 20. In which of the following reign Chaucer not lived? Option A, Edward III. Option B, Richard II. Option C, Richard III. And option D, Richard IV. And here option C, that is Richard III, is the correct answer. Let's go through the highlighters. He held a number of royal posts serving both Edward III and his successor Richard III. Sorry, Richard II. Chaucer lived during Edward III, Richard II, Henry IV. He was the first poet to be buried in Westminster Abbey, now known as the Poet's Corner. Question number 21. Fall of Prince is a poem on which of the following tale? Option A, Knight's Tale. Option B, Monk's Tale. Option C, Wife of Bath's Tale. And Option D, Priest's Tale. Option B is the correct answer, Monk's Tale. Let's see the highlighters. John Lydgate, who was born in 1370 and 1451. This is his died, uh, death year. His important works are The Complaint of the Black Knight, modeled on Chaucer's The Book of the Duchess and The Temple of Grass, Glass. Indebted to the House of Fame, Region and Sensuality. It is an allegoric book, Troy book, a major contribution to the rendering of classical myth into English. It is 3,000, sorry, 30,000 lines translation of Guido del Colon, commissioned by Prince Henry V. The Story of Thieves, Prince Fall of Prince. These are few of the works of the writer. Question number 22. Les Mortes de Arthur is a book in 21 books, 8 books, 18 books and option D, 5 books. Here, option B, that is 8 books, is the correct answer. Le Morte de Arthur, it is a compilation of traditional tales about the legend King Arthur, Guinevere, Lancelot, and the Knight of the Round Table. It was first published in 18, sorry, 1485 by William Caxton. He wrote about Arthur in eight books, but Caston converted it into 21 books. The books are Book 1, From the Marriage of King Arthur onto King, sorry, King Uther into King Arthur that reigned after him and did many battles. Book 2, The Novel Tale Between King Arthur and Lucius the Emperor of Rome. Uh, book 3. The Noble Tale of Sir 
Launcelot de Lake. Book 4. The Tale of Sir Garrett of Orkney. Book 5. The Book of Sir Tristram D. Lyons. Book 6. The Noble Tale of the Sangreal. Book 7. Sir Lancelot and Queen Guinevere. Book 8. The Death of Arthur. Question number 20. Who called Spencer as our sage and serious poet? Whom I dare be known to think a better teacher than Scouts or Quinas? Option A. Keats. Option B. Milton. Option C. Samuel Th Johnson. Option D. Dryden. Option B. Bill Milton is the correct answer. Milton in his Aeropagitica called Spencer, our sage and serious poet, whom I dare to be known to think, whom I dare to be known to think a better teacher than Scouts or Quinas. Charles Lamb called him poet's poet. Rickett remarked Spencer as child of Renaissance and Reformation. According to Ben Johnson, Spencer died at the age of 46 for the want of bread. C.S. Lewis said Spencer was not one of the great sonators. Dryden remarks that Shakespeare himself might not have achieved so much if Spencer had not lived and labored. Let's read a few more points. W.B. Yeats called Spencer, the first salaried moralist. Pope compared Spencer to a mistress whose faults we see but love her with them all. Ben Johnson opined that Spencer writ no language. Thompson referred to Spencer as my master Spencer. Bosworth praised Spencer as the embodiment of nobility, purity, and sweetness. In his The White Doe of Willstone or The Faith of the Nortons, a long narrative poem. Question 14. In which work who plans to delight the king by entertaining him as music and poetry is his delight. Therefore, I will have Italian masks by night. Option A, the Jew of Malta, Barabbas. Option B, Edward II, Gavestone. Option C, Edward III, Gavestone. Option D, Hero and Leander, Hero. Option B, that is Edward III in Gavestone is the correct answer. Edward II, 1594. The play was published in 1594 after the death of Marlowe. The full title is The Troublesome Reign and Lamentable Death of Edward II, King, King of England with the Tragical Fall of Proud Mortimer, Depiction of homosexual affection between Edward III and Gavestone in this play. Marlowe found the material of this play from Raphael Polingshed's Chronicles, which was published in the year 1587. The play starts with the recall of Edward II's favorite fires, Gavestone from exile and ends with the execution of Mortimer Jr. by Edward III for Edward II's murder. Let's move to the next question, question number 25. Which of the following work best represents the characteristic of pre greenian dramatic romance? Options are, option A, The Old Wives and Old Wives Tales, option B, A Midsummer Night's Dream, option C, Cymbeline, option D, Sir 
Simon and Sir Simandis. Sir Climon and Sir Climades. Let's see the highlighters. Sir Simon and Sir Climades. This was, this was published in the year 1599, a tragic comedy. Best represents the characteristic of pre greenian dramatic romance. Opens in Denmark, rhymed heptameter verse. Influences several plays of Shakespeare's as As You Like It, A Midsummer Night's Dream, and Cymbeline, Henry IV, Part Two. Friends, we have completed Day 4's question answers. I hope it was useful for you all. Apart from questions, I try to give more and more information regarding the highlighters so that you will be prepared not only with that particular specific question but with other uh, points from where examiner can ask you questions. So another important thing I wish to tell you all is that you, if you wish to get PDF notes and if you wish to join WhatsApp group, then please make a call to our number. Number I have already shared at the beginning of the video. And here also, I can show you the number. Please make a call to me and message me. I will surely be there to help you out. And if you wish, you can make an email to our sir as well in this email address. We will meet in our next video, friends. Till then, study well and keep revising the lessons. Otherwise, it will be of no use. Thank you very much.